Well, I have the honor of standing in between you and a city tour uh, or the bar, and maybe both. I'm not too sure which. But it is really great to be here uh, for a couple reasons. First thing is, um, I've traveled to India uh, a lot uh, over the past uh, 15 to 20 years. And I have to say, I've never seen so much growth and change um, of any country that I've been to. And I've probably traveled to 30, 35 countries uh, in my career. And second of all, interestingly enough, Dell, in, in a lot of ways, is, is, almost, is like India in that they have grown and shape-shifted over the past uh, 25 years. So I appreciate this time. Um, I'm here to essentially talk about judo strategy. And I'd like to make a connection between what's going on in the marketplace, why you all need to be masters in judo strategy, and how Dell can play into that. So first of all, uh, a little bit about the firm. Uh, we do IT analysis, validation, and consulting. Uh, we're pundits. Uh, we get paid to inform end clients, uh, IT companies, uh, what's going to happen in the future, what has happened in the context, and help them uh, to craft the ultimate solutions uh, for people like you. We focus on disruption. We don't necessarily focus on the 85% uh, steady state businesses. We focus on really the tectonic shifts in the marketplace. Uh, proud to say that we deal with the absolute top companies uh, in infrastructure, cloud, social media, uh, the largest consumer electronics company in the world, um, PC companies, tablet companies, and we also spent a lot of time with chip companies because what we found is that a lot of the bets that the chip companies are making today will really guide the direction for the next five to seven years. And it really gives us a leg up to uh, talk about this. And even in the short period of time, uh, we're proud to say we're the number one ranked IT independent analyst in the US. Uh, a lot of people are asking for our opinion, including uh, press from around the world, and the press in, inside of India, uh, inside of many countries uh, around the world. So I'm going to start this, this off today by talking about shift. Shift happens. We've heard a lot, we heard a lot about the futurists and what to expect, but to, we really have to personalize it and get our brains wrapped around what change means. Of the 200, 100 to 200 companies in here today, some of you in five years will be 10x the size you are today. Others could be 10 times smaller. I hope not, uh, because you're represented here. Probability is you won't. But some, some of you will. In the US, you're all familiar with the Dow Jones Industrial. As of 1990, there's only 13 companies that even exist on the Dow Jones that were around before 1990. The rest are history. They're gone. Either went out of business or were acquired or merged with somebody else. Apple, today worth $524 billion, was nearly bankrupt in 1997 until, of all people, Microsoft gave them $150 million cash infusion. I hope they kept the investment, because <laughs> they would have cashed out pretty well. Uh, tablets. Uh, I actually worked uh, for a company in 1990 who had the first Windows tablet um, almost 25 years ago. Um, now, that market in 2005 was only a million units. Now, it's 150 times that in seven years later. Shift happens. Let's take Google. Google is a verb. We're going to Google this or Google that. Didn't even exist 15 years ago, and AltaVista was the number one search engine. And they don't even exist anymore. They got subsumed into Yahoo. Nokia and RIM. 
I have seen a lot of Blackberries uh, this week. Uh, it makes sense. Blackberry is an IT friendly and rock solid device with encryption. But four years ago, Nokia and RIM had 80, almost 85% market share. Now they're struggling to keep 9%. That's four years, 84% to 9%. What happened? Shift happens. It happened to these companies, and it's going to happen to you. You may be asking yourself, well, is there some thread here that drove these changes in the markets and, and the companies? Well, a lot of times, it was a smaller company who went against the biggest company that was out there, played the game very differently. And I like to refer to that as judo strategy. Now, this representative picture here, um, I won't tell you who the big company is, um, but you could probably guess. So what is judo strategy? So it's characterized by the smaller opponent keeping the larger opponent off balance and making it so they can't swing all of their resources uh, to bear. And what it does is it essentially it turns that competitor's strength into a weakness. And you can see this with Google. You can see this even with Apple. You can go down the list, and nine times out of the ten, they were playing judo strategy. Um, and they pulled in a sub-strategy, which I'll pull from um, marketing warfare, uh, which is called the law of the opposites. That's where essentially taking your enemies or arch rivals' strength and tur turning it into a weakness. So some people think, some IT companies mean that bigger is better. Well, a lot of times bigger is slower. And being bigger is rigid. Smaller a lot of times means faster, you can make decisions quicker. Upstart means the new and fresh. And history, well, we respect history, but many times it's old and behind the times. And when it comes down to even your own career, it's, you know, do you get promoted for taking the risk or do you keep the job for being safe? Now, a lot of this sounds like you know, ethereal strategy and, and something that's up in the clouds, but it really does uh, relate to IT. And let me go into this. So let's transport ourselves into the future. If you buy into the fact that five to seven years ago and versus now, there's been dramatic tectonic shifts, then you also have to believe that in five years from now, there's going to be tectonic shifts as well. I've done an extensive amount of research on this, uh, 30, 40 years back, to look at the parallels of how do you predict the future. And quite frankly, predicting the future, if you're 51% right, you're doing really well. Okay, But knowing where the technology is going, knowing what the investment bets are, we can come up with a pretty good idea here. So essentially, whether it be from... Uh, your wristwatch, your smartphone, your tablet, your TV, your car, your room computer, your Google glasses and your TV are all going to want to access your IT resources. And they're going to want to access it 24 by 7 in the most secure manner possible, um, any way possible, and it's going to have to be free as well. That sounds pretty good, right? Well, not really, but it really is coming. I mean, we're looking today at people who are printing out toys with three-dimensional printers. Now, let's extrapolate that forward a few years. People will be printing out spare parts for bicycles, uh, dentures uh, in certain parts of the world. And from a user interface standard, everything is changing. Who would have thought five years ago so, for instance, with the Xbox, that a primary user interface would be air gestures, okay? 
Um, that's almost, but an entire industry, hundreds of companies are working to bring that into every thread. So five years from now, you could very well see as popular as it is, is typing on a keyboard and using a mouse, we'll be gesturing and talking to our computers. And yes, I know, I'm a bit skeptical uh, on the voice thing too, okay? But given that voice was in every version of Windows, last three version of Windows, and none of us are using it, right? Uh, but it's coming because there's R&D and researchers have actually solved the problems and they're productizing it now. So if you buy into that there's gonna be this tectonic shift 10 to 15 years from now, sorry, uh, five years from now, you really have to be asking the question, can you approach IT now the same way you did <clears throat> 10 to 15 years ago? And, and I, think we all, I think we all know the answer to that. So what does this have to do with Dell? So in my company's practice, we, we research the biggest infrastructure companies all the way in between down to the people making the client devices. And, and one thing that strikes me about Dell is they are judo masters in, in many, many ways. First of all, they've been leading key transitions in the marketplace for a long time, whether it's the direct model on the PC side, um, whether it's servers and infrastructure, on the infrastructure side and virtualized servers, workstations, completely reshape those markets. I used to work for the number one PC company in 1995, Compaq. They don't even exist anymore. Why? Dell forced Compaq to make a choice between PCs and enterprise. They chose enterprise, got subsumed by HP, and the rest is history, and there is no Compaq anymore. Dell also knows how to drive commoditization. Let me be really clear. Commoditization doesn't mean cheap, okay? Commoditization means that, see, some companies will convince you that something is so difficult and mystical and hard that you should pay a lot of money for it. Well, the great thing about Dell is they come along and they say, well, wait a second, this isn't, this isn't that difficult. Um, if we can build economies of scale and really go after this thing, we can save you guys a lot of money. And they've done this time and time again. Now, Dell, as, they're moving, as they've moved into this end-to-end -end play, which quite frankly, doesn't even look like the Dell of five to 10 years ago, very different company. It's all goodness for IT uh, in a lot of ways. And not just on the cost side, uh, but on the comprehensive nature uh, of their solutions. And the more that they commoditize what used to be thought of as the uncommoditizable or value add, the better it's gonna be for all of you. The next thing is speed. Some IT players, large ones, will say, well, a company who's fast can't be good or comprehensive. That's absolutely wrong. That's what they said about the PC space, workstation space, uh, and the virtualized server space uh, five years ago. That's false. Dell brings speed with comprehensive solutions. The fourth element, and this is a classic judo strategy move. You have the incumbents who want who have the innovator's dilemma. They have the market share, they want to come in and stay for life, okay? It's, hey, you don't know how to do IT, but I do, so I'm gonna come in for a decade, and I might even take all of your IT away from you, because I know how to do it better. Well, we see how well that works. Some people it works well, a lot of people it doesn't. Uh, the largest uh, auto company in America, General Motors, got out of their entire outsourced business and is doing IT themselves because they realized they lost their edge in development. Dell comes in and teaches people how to fish. Now, they're not in for life, but they're actually okay with that because in their minds, they'll teach people how to fish and they'll do it so well the people will go back 
again. That's a classic characteristic uh, of a judo move. Uh, next thing is respecting, respecting the past, but not idolizing it, okay? You may hear from some people that prowess in the PC business doesn't matter. That's absolutely false. In this age where literally per user who's tapping into your IT on the average of four or five devices, two of them are corporate and three or four of them might be their own, there is going to be a needed expertise for the overall experience to give those users the best experience possible. And that is where uh, we believe that Dell will bring their client business to bear. Um, one of the biggest acquisitions that, that, in my opinion, Dell made was the Weiss acquisition. A lot of people said, ah, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's, gosh, Weiss has been in business forever since the 3270 dumb tubes connected to an IBM cluster controller, right? Absolutely not. Weiss is a secret weapon, uh, in my estimation, to, to as we do move to the client as a service that essentially will be accessed from having a smart card, it becomes key. The final piece are industry standards versus proprietary. It doesn't matter what market you're in. Bicycles, banking, healthcare, the larger guy is going to try to lock you in. In fact, they teach it in business school. Who's ever been to business school? Right? The biggest thing you can do is lock somebody in for the long term. Dell isn't about that. They're coming, their goal is to come in, recreate markets, smash uh, opponents, and create new paradigms. And as it, as it relates to converged infrastructure, it's interesting because sometimes it sounds like people are talking out of both sides of their mouth. It's like, okay, converged infrastructure, which means buy everything from me, and it's gonna be most efficient, but then again, it's gonna be industry standard. That is a line that, a very interesting tightrope uh, that needs to be balanced. But I've seen Dell's approach for, we've been watching them for over, I don't know, almost 25 years. And they've stuck to their guns on industry standards and believe that uh, they can take this uh, to the next level. Okay, so what does all this mean? So at some point, all of you in this room need to actually internalize whether you buy into whether all this change is going to happen for your enterprise. You know, do you buy into that you're going to be 10x the size of the company and you're going to have to be driving that as the IT leaders in your organization or um, your potential to wither away as a company? Because for some of you, IT is the business. For others, you may have a business but the only way they're gonna grow is through IT. And you're gonna to have to make the decision on who you, who you do align with uh, for the next uh, five to 10 years. And the great thing is you don't have to align with just one person. You can align with multiple people. If you find yourself aligning yourself with just one person, you're gonna be spending a whole lot of money. Uh, it's not gonna be the best thing for you uh, in the long term. Um, sure, aligning yourself with the judo master is sometimes riskier, but quite frankly, they always deliver the biggest wins. Uh, look at the Googles, look at the Facebooks, uh, look at the Apples. They were all big risks. They played judo incredibly well, and it paid off uh, for, it, for everything. So uh, we recommend at More Insights and Strategy, you ask yourself these, these questions about your IT provider. First things, um, will they flex and help you lead to the next inflection point? Flexibility is so key. Um, I've read study after study which said one of the biggest things that separated the winners and the losers in some of these key markets has been the flexibility to, uh, to adapt. Ask your IT rank your IT partner, are they generally slow or are they fast? 
Um, fast doesn't always mean the highest quality. Sometimes it does. But if generally your IT provider, because they have your business, likes to sit uh, on their hands, that's probably a trouble spot for you that you're going to see in the future at some point when you really, really need a partner. Um, next, uh, do they respect the client device? Do they understand it or do they write it off as a liability? We believe that for the next five years, there's a vital core competency that uh, needs to get wrapped up in that. And I I've told Dell, I I I've said, hey, you don't leverage this core, you don't market this enough. Um, and I hope to see that they will. We believe that, that it's, it's going to be very important. Um, next, is their goal to camp out for, for years? Literally, read their mission statement. What do they do? If the end result of their mission statement results in that they need to hang out for 5, 10, 15 years to make it work out, you really need to ask yourself whether that's good for you. Sometimes it makes sense to take your hand off the wheel and hopefully will somebody come in and drive the car for you. But what I've seen a lot of is people realizing that IT is a competitive weapon to use to get a competitive advantage to drive the stock up, make the company huge, and make the company great. Um, and very rarely have I seen that with a company who's taken their hand off the wheel and let somebody else uh, drive uh, the car for them. And finally, industry standards. And yeah, I get it. They're de facto standards, industry standards. Uh, sometimes industry standards have, have their ups and downs. But if the company doesn't have an absolute commitment to industry standards, then um, you may be partnered, partnered with the wrong person. So, you know, with that, um, hopefully at this point, you know, you see the change is going to happen, and it's not something you read on a slide. It's going to happen to all of you uh, in here, uh, and you are really thinking very hard of of what kind of partners uh, to partner with, and with that. I want to thank you very much.